In the past, we lived in a relatively empty world where all of these ecosystem services were, were available in abundance. And so it didn't make sense in that context to, to spend too much effort worrying about them. That situation has changed dramatically. Now we, we live in a more full world and we're having, beginning to have an impact on those services and their production. The conventional economic view has been that ecosystems and their services are, are luxury goods. Uh, these are something that, yes, they're nice, they're pretty, you know, we can, uh, if we can afford it, that would be good to, to uh, conserve nature. But if we can't afford it, then okay, it's, it's a luxury good. I think nothing could be further from the truth. Yeah, the Amazon really harbors the greatest uh, biological diversity on Earth. And the interactions between millions of species are fundamental to keep this stability. The tropical forests of the, of the world, in particular the Amazon being the largest tropical forest, are important in producing chemical species, for instance, the radical OH, which is the cleansing factor for the planetary atmosphere, for the, all of the atmosphere. So the plants produce chemicals, and those species, through very complex photochemical reactions, uh, release this radical OH, which will participate in the, in the photochemistry of all uh, the tropical atmosphere and even outside of the tropics, keeping the atmosphere very clean. And clean atmosphere means healthy atmosphere as well, unpolluted atmosphere. So there are many ways of looking uh, how important the Amazon is for the, for the planetary machinery. We are deforesting in Brazil in the last few years about 20 to 25,000 square kilometers. So the Amazon is becoming like a Swiss cheese with holes all over. If this trend continues, this will be a big cattle ranch with soybean and other agricultural products being grown. It's really very dramatic to think that perhaps less than 100 years from now, we might have 20% remaining forests. And, all, and we have to say 20% of also of remaining animals, not to mention that a very large fraction of those animals will vanish because the forest will also become very fragmented very uh, unable, unable to sustain large populations of many animals. I, I don't think many people are, are aware of the seriousness, what we could be making to the planet. What really lies behind all of this, the things we're seeing in the environment, the mass extinctions, is the huge expansion of what we call the human enterprise. We have converted over half of the Earth's land surface into a new form. 
from forest to croplands, from grasslands to croplands, and so on. It's amazing. You think in our day-to-day -day lives, you know, well, I'm not driving anything extinct. How are we managing to cause such a dramatic change in the planet? It's in our collective action, um, things that we just don't think about that much. But food production is probably our most important activity. And we use huge tracts of land to grow our food. And we're expanding the area under cultivation each year. Um, having massive impacts. We are completely dependent on industrialized farming. I mean, if, if we, the rich consumers uh, of the world, are going to get enough tomatoes and beef and whatever we want, uh, we, ha we are totally dependent on industrialized farming, high-tech farming. We just wouldn't get enough food unless we, unless we used industrial farming, which in many ways is producing food products which are of much lower quality. Well, they are much lower quality than, than if they're growing locally and in, in, permitted to mature in the sun and, 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 and on the plant and so on. The key features of industrial farming intensive agriculture are the artificial fertilization of crops, uh, force feeding really, using nitrogen fertilizer, which then produces rapid growth but gives vulnerability to attack by pests and diseases and also produces when crops are grown in a long succession weed problems. Now to deal with those problems you need pesticides, fungicides, herbicides. This time-lapse photography shows in a few moments the gradual killing of a common weed over a 15-day period after spraying with 2,4-D weed killer, causing gradual but certain death. To kill them, modern chemical methods provide the answer. Vegetation control kills all, kills all. By the end of the century, we are promised a dazzling new world. new world. A world in which man will be in control of his environment. Well, agriculture goes back some 11,000 years, and throughout um, most of that period, more than half, agriculture was hand agriculture. We planted, we dug things up, and everything was done by hand. And then somewhere along the way, we domesticated livestock and, and horses, and then we, we began to use draft animals, and that greatly increased the amount of energy that we could use to produce food. So th with that technology, then agriculture began to spread quite rapidly around the world. Then the next big break came when um, we developed the internal combustion engine, then we could use that for in tractors, we could use it for uh, grain uh, thrashing and, and processing. Um, and, and so suddenly we were able to use fossil fuel, solar energy from eons ago stored under the earth, um, to expand our food production. With a better use of brains and muscles, better use of nature, and above all, with more and better tools, the modern farmer can free 15 or 20 men from the land. The great acceleration is the um, change in the rate of increase of many variables that we see right around 1950 after, uh, after World War II. 
a great acceleration of land use change, a great acceleration of fossil fuel burning, an acceleration in the um, production of nitrogen fertilizers and nitrogen inputs into the, into the biosphere. Uh, it's caused a, a multitude of different uh, changes. The globalization of the uh, economy and the culture, for that matter, I think is a, is a primary concern. That this great acceleration has allowed to happen, uh, this, this uh, globalization, so all of the world's economies are now interconnected with each other. The Earth's biosphere is becoming more homogenous. We only grow a few different types of foods to provide the bulk of sustenance for humans. So that means that a wheat field looks the same in the US, in the Ukraine, in Argentina, or in Australia. Those ecosystems, which were different originally, are now homogenized. We're making the Earth's biosphere more similar. The great biogeographical differences between continents are being lost as we spread our own technologies for growing food and as our transport and communication increases. The impacts of this sort of homogenization haven't really been played out completely yet. But they, they have the same type of impacts as losing biodiversity. We tend to lose resilience in systems when we make them simpler. If we are transforming the surface of the planet into monocultures, we create extremely vulnerable environments. ज्यावेळेस रासायनिक खत निघालो होतो त्यावेळेस जी ज्वारी आम्ही दोन पोते पिकवायचो म्हणजे कापूस जे एक क्विंटल पिकायचा आम्हाला तो कापूस आम्ही दहा क्विंटल पर्यंत पिकवत होतो आणि त्याच्यानंतर लगेच अजून कमी कमी व्हायला लागून गेलं ते मग कमी कमी व्हायला लागून गेलं आता अशी पोझिशन आहे ते कितीही खतं लावले तरी ते हे नाही करत बघ पिक लवकर क्विक आळ्यांवरती कितीही जरी औषध मारलं कोणतंही भारी औषध मारलं त्याच्यावरती आळ्या मरत नाही हे जे वापरून राहिलो आम्ही याच्यामुळे आमचं असं होतंय दरवर्षी आम्हाला उत्पादन घेण्यामध्ये खर्च जास्त प्रमाणात लागतोय आम्हाला माझ्यावर सुद्धा लोन आहे प्रायव्हेट लोन पण आहे गव्हर्नमेंट बी आहे आणि प्रायव्हेट पण आहे दोघं लोन आहेत माझ्यावरती त्याच्यामुळे ते बी तगा झाला होता ते लावतात जीवन एकदम कठीण झालेलं आहे जग Half of the world's people, three billion people around the planet, live on less than two dollars a day. They live in a world where biodiversity matters to them very keenly. They depend upon the services nature provides. Um, it's ensuring that these people, the poorest, the most vulnerable people on the planet, have the right kind of options so that they can have access to the things that make life better for them, the things that protect their natural environment. That's the issue here. For people who think the world is getting better, go and live in a small village in Madagascar or Zambia or remote parts of the Amazon. You'd have a different perspective of, of human progress. 